Why is quantifying cyber risk so darn hard? It's funny. There's two, two different approaches to it. There is this sort of uh, we are mathematicians and we can quantify anything kind of approach. And then there's this practitioner based view, which has grown up outside of any formal methods for quantifying things. I think it's uh, that old notion that, you know, I, I've been I've been doing it this way forever. I've been successful. Why do I need to change? And then this other view, which is a more insurance quantitative kind of view, like, of course, we're going to apply these same measures to it. Why wouldn't we do it to to, to the cyber Meeting in the middle is probably the better way to go. A lot of organizations really suck at understanding hard and soft dollars as it relates to risk. I can't tell you how many times I've just walked into an organization and I've said, okay, how many computers can be off for how long until it is so economically unviable for you? Torches and pitchforks at the CEO's door, you know, you're out of business and crickets. I, I think right. the worst outcome of not quantifying risk is a misallocation of scarce resources. So either mm -hmm. you're going to be swayed by the personality of the CISO or the CIO to invest in things that don't really move the needle on risk, uh, or you're going to underinvest in those things and, uh, and, and then expose yourself to undue harm. When I'm dealing with an organization, for example, that has no clue on risk whatsoever, they're just starting down the road. If I'm talking specifically about cyber risk, I usually use this basic equation, cyber risk equals threat times vulnerability times information value. So mm -hmm. in other words, what is the threat? How vulnerable are you systems? Uh, are your systems? What is the reputational and financial damage to your organization if it's breached or becomes unavailable? That is the basic framework. Soft skills matter a lot. There's very mm -hmm. little in FAIR or any cybersecurity learning you would do that was gonna teach you how to do this. You have to talk to the business and you have to understand what they do and more importantly, how they make money. We're always trying to plan left of boom, right? We right. don't want to have the boom and be unprepared. And I think that's where good contingency planning comes in place, uh, into play. Good contingency planning is going to have a disaster scenario for things where everybody is going to have to work from home indefinitely or, uh, you know, for some reason or a ransomware event, uh, you know, that just hits you out of the blue. Welcome to the Department of Yes, where no request is ever rejected. Allow executives to swipe left if they don't like a risk. Well, they should be able to allow uh, to be swipe left on whatever it is. They should know the business better than anybody else. Therefore, they should understand the risk. And if they don't consider it a risk to the business, they should be able to knock it off. I mean, this is basic just risk acceptance, right? If you think about Tinder as a risk register, that's exactly what this is. This comes from Mia Clift. Imagine you're just getting started to get a risk program going at an organization and a cyber organization. While they may have some practices in place, there's a huge amount of risk because of a lack of asset management. How do you even begin the quantification and the discussions to leadership therein? Sure. C can you have a discussion? Absolutely. Can you quantify it? Sure. I think the difference is, are you, how precise are you going to be with these sort of right. things? So you have to make a lot of assumptions about the systems and the structural integrity and security control of the systems underlying these things, but mm -hmm. you could put something in place that begins the organization down a path of having a conversation around what loss would look like. Any good um, cyber defense strategy is going to basically include improvement planning. When I'm talking about cybersecurity with an organization, uh, you know, we lead with risk, but we understand that one of those baseline table stakes things that an organization needs to do is have an assessment. They need to understand how essentially they score, uh, you know, in my opinion, against a standardized cybersecurity framework. How do you balance both business and technical risk, Jack? We've walked into a lot of organizations that have had a risk assessment done, and it's purely quantification of security controls, which is important, don't get me wrong, but it's not holistic in nature. And how you balance business and technical risk, the short answer is very, very carefully. <laughs> You're either way too cautious, uh, which can potentially harm morale to the business as well, um, not to mention affect your bottom line, um, or you're too loose and you're too fast. And then basically every criminal hacker and foreign intelligence agency on the planet mm -hmm. can tell the world what your CEO had for lunch. I think understanding the risk and the risk appetite and having an actual assessment that is informing your hard and soft dollars, I think is just beyond important. So one of the things that we're trying to do is make third party risk management easy uh, by um, providing uh, verifiable uh, empirical data about the state of uh, different companies. Now, uh, that's outside in view of data. And the reason that um, my team at the risk division was brought on was to help do the inside out analyses and to add that and have more robust data. So that's what we're doing there too. I'm trying to build the equivalent of a, uh, a biometric assessment for cyber for cybersecurity. We do it for life insurance, but we don't do it yet for cybersecurity, but we will someday soon. 
I think it's important to understand that if your organization really has not gone down the risk road, it's important to start the discussion, even if it's at the most rudimentary level. And also understand, especially if you're especially if you're a cybersecurity professional here, that this is a hearts and minds situation. You have to have the buy-in from uh, essentially the C level that is going to be able to push this through the organization. They have to be your biggest cheerleaders, which means you have to speak at their level. Don't get, uh, I, I see this constantly as I'm coaching CIOs that have come up from IT directors. Um, don't get into this, this, this speaking straight up nerd to the C level. Understand that they have a three to five year vision or more for their organization and you basically protect the engine of their economy 